What's up, bro? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. All right, I think. I don't know what I did, but I think it should work. Can, now, can you hear me now? Yeah. I can hear you too. All right. Awesome. Sorry about that. Oh, don't worry. I said it was me. <laughs> so, uh, so how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Good. Can't complain. I just wanted to say a really big thank you uh, for taking some time out of your day to hop on. Uh, it really means a lot. So um, for the audience that may not know who you are, if you just want to introduce yourself a little bit and let them know who you are and, and kind of what you're about. All right. Um, yeah, my name is um, Hugo Faru. I'm a goalkeeper, 25 years old. Um, I play for Austin Bold in the USL Championship this year. Um, I'm from France, come from the Ice Can and Ice Monaco Academy. And then I went to Lake Erie College, a D2 school in Ohio. And that's when I spent two years and transferred to FIU in Florida. So it was a good change. And um, I also played in Norway after college. And uh, then I came back to Miami, played in amateur in Florida, just waiting for the green card process. And uh, here I am now, living in Miami and playing in the, in the championship. Awesome, awesome. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So. Now, um, one of my first questions for you is when you started playing football when you were young, you started off in the AS Monaco Academy, I believe. Yeah, um, AS Khan. AS Khan, sorry. And um, when you were younger, was going pro as a going pro in football always something that you had in mind or was it more about just enjoying it and seeing what happens along the way? Uh, no, it's always been a, it's always been a dream. Um, you know, in France, it's different than the U.S. When you play soccer, you only play soccer. You know, you don't have time for school. You don't have time to work on the side, you know. So, um, obviously, the, the, when I started, I was like four years old. I didn't think mm -hmm. about going pro when I was four years old. But um, mm -hmm. when I started getting it, you know, when I was 10, you know, between 10 and 15, you know, my dream was to play professional. Uh, took time. Took time to happen. But, uh, yeah, always been a dream. That's awesome. So I'm really interested to hear because I'm always fascinated by, you know, people's stories, because I think one thing that's really important is for, you know, younger aspiring professional footballers to realize that it's not a straight line to where you want to be. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about your story. So one of my first questions is, um, what was one of the biggest challenges that you faced in your career, whether it be physically, mentally, and how did you overcome that? um so i would say the biggest the biggest challenge was when i was in uh, i moved from Cannes to monaco uh, when i was 17 and uh, well first of all physically it was it was tough you know i was hoping to you know play for the academy two years and sign professional it just it didn't, it didn't happen you know i played with the reserve team the whole two years um and at this point i was about to i don't think i was about to give up but at this point i had to go to school too you know my parents they were like okay now you're 17, 18, what are you going to do? You know, you're not going to sign pro now. So what's the plan, you know? So I was going to go to university, you know, and then um, study. And then I had have, I have this agent coming to me, uh, this agent that sends players to the U.S. And I was like, perfect. You know, I can study at the same time as playing soccer and keep playing to, to reach my dream. Um, so that was already a first overstepping, over, um, overcoming a challenge, you know, because I was about to stop. Um, and, and after that, it's just um, opportunities, contacts, 
Um, I also didn't have a green card. So after my four years, you know, I was had good four years. I didn't have a great senior year, but um, you know, I was hoping for the draft. Didn't happen. I don't even think that any team was interested in drafting me um, because I didn't have a green card. So that was tough. And that's when it's really when it started to, to be really hard, you know. Um, I met that agent on LinkedIn that texted me and said, hey, look, I have a team in Norway, uh, third division. Are you interested? At first, you know, I was talking to a USA League One team. So I was like, OK, I'm going to wait and see. Um, didn't happen because of the green card. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to Norway, have fun. Um, and I went. It was was really bad. I left after six months, um, came back to the US. And me and my wife were like, you know what? I'm just going to stay in Miami, um, enjoy my, my life with my wife and keep playing, you know. But I, I don't really know at that point what was in my head. You know, I don't really know if I was going to give up or not, but I didn't. I kept playing amateur for Palm Beach, Palm Beach Stars, which was coached by a, a guy that played for Argentina national team. He played with Maradona, um, played for Atletico Madrid, played for River, played Boca Juniors. So I was like, let me do it. And I played, and at the same time, I was doing the, the green card process. And it took a long time. I think it took 11 months, so I couldn't sign anywhere. Um, so I just played the whole year. And then after that, so I had a green card. So, you know, thinking that it was going to be easy. Um, no, it's not. It's still, okay, well, now, yeah, you have the green card, but what have you done the last two years after college, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was another challenge of what do I need to do, you know, like, now I have the green cards. There's another reason. So what I needed was um, someone to trust me. And I got very lucky. I got very lucky with, uh, first of all, my agent that, you know, gave me a chance and signed me one. I didn't have the green card yet. And this agent knew the Austin Bold goalkeeper coach, who is huge on uh, giving chances. This guy, is a, he's a legend. He gives chances, chances to a lot of young guys, a lot of people that didn't get chances before. So he told me to come to a camp that he was doing with a friend in Tampa. I went and I broke my two fingers the day before going. Another challenge. Um, so at this point, I was like, OK, I just paid 600 bucks to go to that camp. What do I do? It was the whole week. And I was like talking to my wife, do I go home? Because I can't play. You know, I couldn't play. The, the coach thought that I was like, yeah, I'm just a little bit injured. I got there and I was like, can't put my gloves on. You know, like, what do I do? And my wife told me to stay. She was like, just stay. You know, I mean, the hotel is paid for. You have food for the week. Whatever, just stay. So I stayed, and that's what made me sign. Um, because, you know, I don't want to say that I'm amazing, but I have a good personality. So I just stayed, and I helped the other goalkeepers. I was serving. I was pushing them, you know, just because that's the way I am. And uh, the, the coach loved it. And he told me at the end that, you know, he... I also played with my feet a little bit, which is my my main quality. Um, and he told me that he's glad that I stayed and that he could see my my uh, personality and that it shows that, you know, I deserve a chance. So that's how I signed, actually, my my first contract in the USL. So it's just so many ups and downs, man. You just cannot imagine. People don't know. It's just it's crazy. Absolutely. That's, that's an amazing story. So I have to say, after your first year as a professional what has been the the difference like the biggest difference from what you thought it was going to be to what it actually is um well the main thing i'm gonna say is that first of all i didn't have a good season you know it was it was bad the truth is that it was bad uh, i played five games and i didn't play good so um the main difference for me is that there is no you get punished so quick, you know? Um, I spent two years playing amateur and professional in Norway, but, you know, it's not as good thinking that, you know, I was just going to get back to USL and right away, you know, show up and do my thing. But the truth is, it doesn't work like that. It's so much daily. Do you hear that? Want to get a message or no? Yeah, yeah, I hear it a little bit. Uh, no, it's just 
daily walk. You know, it's you have to be 100% every day, walk every day, and just being away for two years didn't help me. And then um, it was tough, man, physically, men mentally, especially mentally, you know, because for two years, I wasn't um, being, um, how do you say, um, people were not counting on me, you know, and now I, I just step in and people are counting on me and I didn't show up. So that's, people don't forgive, you know, people, they're not going to be like, hey, it's okay, second chance, third chance. No, it's like one chance, two chances, then you're out, you know. And uh, I was out until the, the starter got injured, so I had to show up again. But, um, man, the professional world is just no forgiveness, man. It's, it's tough. Yeah, I believe you. Because I, I have a somewhat of a similar story. When I was um, playing academy and I was younger, I had worked so unbelievably hard. There's a long story behind it, but there's not enough time to say it. But anyway, I finally got my chance to play academy. First game, we lost 7 nothing, And I remember thinking to myself, Jesus, like, wow, <laughs> this is it. I put in all that work and this is it. So um, that feeling, it, it, it's tough. It's tough. So um, so as you've seen, like how um, I actually wanted to touch on this really quick as well. Actually, the first podcast I ever did was with uh, one of your goalkeeper coaches, Ronald. Uh, Ronald, yeah. 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 And I, um, after speaking with him, I implemented, he, he's an amazing guy. I implemented yeah. some of the stuff that we spoke about. Um, into my own training and, and stuff like that. So I'd love to hear, you know, how much is, of an impact has he, has he played on you and, and the importance of, of good coaching as well? Ronald, how can I say? What can I say about Ronald? Ronald, I met Ronald um, when I came back from, from Norway, I think. After six months over there, it was terrible. Uh, didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I started training with him. Um, just really not knowing what I was going to do. And I was injured. I had a ankle sprain. It was, it was a mess. But he kept pushing me. He was like, come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. It took me some time. It took me a few weeks to be, like, enjoying it, you know, because even though his strengths are good, my head, my head wasn't there. So Ronald is just someone that, you know, he's pushing you so much. Like, it feels like he's the one training and he's the one playing and he's pushing you. So that you keep going, you know, and I've been training with him for two years now and, you know, he keeps pushing me. He knows I signed pro, but it doesn't matter. He keeps pushing me. He knows I didn't have a good season. He told me as soon as you're back, let's get back to training, you know. And then what's good with Ronald is that, you know, it's pro players, but you also have kids. So you have the kids training with us. They have to show up and they have to be good attitude and, you know, do your best because if not, you're not going to train with the pros. So that's what I really like about Ronald. Uh, you know, we don't have the greatest field. He doesn't care. There's no excuses. So I learned a lot from Ronald. No excuses. You just walk, walk, walk and walk, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I have to say, um, so like one of the things that I admire a lot about you is that that mindset that we kind of spoke about earlier, because um, I think at, so far through my journey, I am only 21, but um, I've just started to, I guess, get into the professional world slowly. Uh, I just got back from trial. Uh, with mm -hmm. the team and uh, for outside reasons, I didn't end up getting the contract just with investors and stuff, unfortunately. Uh, so I can really relate to that feeling of just kind of like feeling like you put in all this work, you finally yeah. get an opportunity. It doesn't work out. So especially for the audience, because there's other people that, um, you know, go through it as well. Um, I've always found the mental side of the game beyond fascinating. And so if you could, shed any like knowledge or, or light on some of the things that you do um, that have helped you kind of stay in it because you're right. Like it's, it's hard. And then that, that, especially as you get older and things don't always work out, you're kind of like, I need to start a life, but I also want to keep pursuing my dream. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about that as well. So let me tell you this. I started focusing on the mental this year only never before I'm 25. I'm the first year in the USL, but before that, I never saw it as a as a key to my game, you know. I mean, even in college, I could have done so much better if I focused on the mental side, and if I knew how important it was. Um, the reason I did it this year is because again, I had a good mentor. You need to have people around you that know about it and push you and help you. So the coach that signed me he was a goalkeeper for many years. He played in the Champions League. He played for the Jamaican national team, um, and he's huge about mental. 
he knows that I have all the qualities technically, physically, you know, like I'm, I'm good, but mental, he just, you know, that's the most important because you can have all of this, but if mentally you're not good, well, nothing is going to happen. It's not going to be good. And that's what happened to me this year. So I'm still learning. I'm like, I'm just learning, learning every day, you know? Um, but for me, there's one thing very important that affected me a lot this year. Uh, so just very quick, I, I did the whole preseason. Um, I was the only goalkeeper, so I did the whole preseason. And then they had a guy on loan that came before the first game of the season. And I still played that first game. He came from MLS. Um, and I played that first game against New Mexico, 9,000 fans in the stadium. And the worst game of my life. All right? So it was terrible. I made like one big mistake and the two, two other goals could, could have well, it could have been better. But uh, after this, I was, I was down, man. I was, I was down, down, down. And the few weeks after that, the impact of my family was terrible, you know, because they don't know about it. They don't know about this stuff. So you talk even to my wife, I talk to my wife, I talk to my dad, and they tell you stuff that puts you down or that makes you angry about the coach or about the other keeper or about all of this stuff. And that's the most important to me that during the year, I was in my bubble. I was like, you know what, Dad? You and I, we're going to talk about family. We're going to talk about whatever you want, but we don't talk about my games. We don't talk about my trainings. We don't talk about my team anymore. My wife, she's the daughter of a professional baseball coach, so she's, she's better at this, and she knows. So she's helping me a lot, too. But you have to be careful with who you surround yourself with. It's very important, man. That's, I cannot, that's the most important to me. And I'm, that's what's helping me a lot right now. You know, because um, if I kept talking to my dad, I would have been like, I would have gone and fight the coach. Or I would have gone and be mad at the other keeper, which, you know, yeah. there's no point. Keepers are together, you know. But uh, for me, that's the main thing, man. It's be in a bubble. Surround yourself with people that know about this stuff. You don't need to be close to them, but they know about this stuff. So they can mm. talk to you and you don't go crazy. Because I was going crazy. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can definitely relate to that because sometimes, um, like you said, sometimes it's even the people close to you. Like when I try to explain certain things to my mother, my mo mom's very old school. So yeah. the fact that I want to play professional football is to her this, yeah. um, this crazy thing. Um, and I realize that she's coming from a good place, but it's important, like you said, to have those people around you that they know what they're talking about and that can lift you up and and no matter if you've done good, bad, whatever, can say this is the target and we keep going forward. Um, sure, I think that, think that is, is very important. Um, so as we keep going, I think one of the interesting things as well. Um, so let me see. If you were to say um, you were to take one experience from either Norway this year, um, youth, whatever it may be um, in football, what has been one of the, the biggest lessons that um, you could pull away from everything going into your, your next year? What would be something that, um, you know, like you're looking forward to or that you're looking to kind of, you know, use as motivation? Yeah. Um, that's, that's a tough one. Um, you know, I think that's, going into preseason with a um, good mindset um just being ready physically technically all of this it's you know it's on the side but being ready mentally knowing that you're just gonna go and no matter what happens it's not gonna affect you cannot affect you because i'm getting affected too much and it's been something in the past that didn't help me. I need to go into preseason next year, wherever I am, because I, I don't even know right now. I'm, I'm here. I don't know where I'm going to be, but wherever I'm going to go in the US, somewhere else, I need to go and nothing's going to affect me. That's what needs to happen. It needs to happen because I'm 25. And if I'm still getting being affected by little things that, of course, are going to upset people. But if you want to keep playing professional, man, your mind has to be has to be so strong that it gets you tired of how strong it is. But it's just the way it is, man. You have to nothing can affect you. Nothing. Make a mistake sure. in a game, make a mistake in training. Someone screams at you on the field. Yeah. Smile at them, you know, smile at them and just nothing can affect you. And that's that's my main thing. And that's what I'm, I'm working on right now. Um, and I'm going to keep working on until, until never, you know, until, until I'm done playing because you can never stop.
That's awesome. Yeah, that's and I don't know if you're aware of this, but actually I had him on my podcast a little while ago, Premier League psychologist Tom Bates. If you ever look up his stuff on YouTube, that was something that um, I found really, really useful. But um, oh, one thing uh, that I would also love to, to touch upon really quick as well is um, aside from the mindset, because we've spoken a lot about that, um, as you've progressed through the levels, what has been some of the reasons that you believe set you apart in terms of whether it be distribution, shot stopping, uh, you know, understanding the game? What are certain things that you've noticed um, that get, you know, better and better and as you get, you know, up the levels? You mean in general, right? So like what's the yeah. difference in distribution from when I was in college and when I was in USL, for example? Yeah, exactly. Uh, for me, and I'm going to talk about this guy that was competing with this year that came from two years in MLS. Um, it's clean. Everything is clean, man. <laughs> you know, you, you can't mess up. It's just for us, you know, goalkeepers you can't drop the ball. Everything has to stay. And in college, you know, it's like, okay, you're training, you drop the ball. It's okay. Next one. In pro, what I see is that, <clears throat> sorry, you have to catch everything and it has to be clean. And if you're not in a good day, well, you need to get in a good day because you have to clean everything. Um, distribution wise, it's just now in college, you have those good keepers with their feet and then you have those that are struggling. In pro, everyone can reach a player that is 50 yards, you know. So now it's about where you can make a difference is how you read the game, um, which again, with how nervous and how mentally not very strong I was, I struggle with, but you know, reaching a player now, everyone can do it. So, um, you know, for anyone on this podcast, um, that is good with their feet. Don't think that you're gonna get to professionals and be on top because you're good with your feet. That's what I thought. And uh, no, everyone can do it. Um, one more thing is the speed of play. That's something that, uh, you know, especially me after my two years uh, now playing at a very high level, and that's that's nothing compared to what's in professional you know it's so quick everything is quick and str strong and quick it's a huge difference that's awesome that's interesting because i can relate to that a little bit i when i was on trial um i'm only 5'11 so in terms of goalkeepers i'm very yeah. short but um i remember when i was on trial and i was like I, i'm a pretty fit guy and, and pretty whatever there was guys six 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 and like and i just remember being like i gotta go up and catch a cross against this guy who is yeah. like, I'm like looking up to him. So it was a, it was an eye opener to me too. I was like, wow. I was like, this is. Uh, uh, sure, man. You, you play against people, they're beasts, you know, and you say you're five, I'm five, I'm six, one, six, two, you know, and my, the guy that was competing with me is six, I think it was six, four, six, five. So just looking at him every day at training, I was like, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, you're different, you know, it's different breed, man. Yeah. But uh, there's so many at the pro level. You know, in college, you have like, you know, like one person of them, two person. Now it's like mm -hmm. all of them are, are beasts, man. That's just the way it is. And it's just US. So imagine if, you know, we go play in South America or Europe. Uh, it's, yeah. it's huge, man. It's crazy. And also touching on being part of, uh, you know, just being clean every day. There was, I remember one time as well, and this is for the listeners more so than you. Um, when I had time with the New England Revolution Academy when I was younger, um, and the goalkeeper coach there at the time for the academy would, would told us the story that the two goalkeepers competing at the time, I believe, were Bobby Shuttleworth and Brad Knighton, who I believe is still there. Um, and the difference between one of them starting was literally catching one more volley and training. I guess one of them dropped whatever, and then that was the other guy. And I remember thinking of that. I was a kid. I don't remember how old, but I was like, wow, like different different levels. So it's, it's really the... the the mind do detail, detail. yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's it been, it's very very eye opening. Um, so. Yeah, because then in a game, in a game, you know, you're not gonna touch the ball a thousand times, you know. So the coach is gonna look at who's the cleanest because when it comes to the game, I need someone that's clean. You can have one rep, you're gonna touch the ball once, and it has to be clean. So yeah, that's what they're looking at. Exactly, exactly. So um, not, I don't want to take up too much of your time, so we'll we'll. Don't worry about it, man. Having fun. Okay, awesome. That's that's what I like. Wait, give me a second. I have five percent. I just want to charge my computer before it dies, just in case. Yeah, no worries.
All right, so good. So, um, yeah, so just a couple things, uh, you know, before we wrap up. Uh, one of the cool things too that I've always found fascinating as well is, and something that this is kind of, again, more so for the listeners and stuff is the, the players that have always inspired me is always, I've always been the ones that never had that, you know, um, straight trajectory, you know, like it's always great to admire Lionel Messi, Christian Ronaldo They're They're on a different level, but uh, for me, one of the biggest things or one of the biggest role models, even though he's not a goalkeeper was Olivier Giroud uh, and his story. I, I just finished his book and, yeah. uh, one of his uh, quotes was, you know, I was built in adversity. And I just remember thinking like that, like his, that his story is, is insane from where he started to, to where he is now. So I think, you know, like just bringing back that mentality part is, is so, so important. So uh, I think that's funny because this guy, so I come from Monaco. So I used to, you know, I'm a Monaco fan too. Um, I remember seeing that guy when he played against Monaco in a f- cup game that went mm-hmm. in second division. Monaco was first division. They go to PKs. He misses PK. Monaco goes to the next round. Everyone was saying, who's that big guy? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't the same as he is right now, but it was still pretty good, you know? And then I remember the year after uh, signing for the first division team. They win the league. And I'm like, now people are seeing him and they're yeah. talking good about him. And then after that, Arsenal. And I'm like, you know, where were the people, the haters before? Uh, yeah. They're all saying he's amazing. You know? It's yeah. just... He's, He's, he's a great example, you know, for people who you know, don't give up. Yeah. He's the guy. I, I was hoping for a while. Uh, I have family in Angers in France. So I was hoping oh, yeah. for, for a while, but that's, that's not going to happen. That's too much of a dream. But anyway, to finish it off on, uh, on a light it note. Never is, it never is. It True. never is, man. True. It never uh, is. So I would love, this is uh, just to kind of leave it off on, on a light note and a fun note. Um, in your opinion, who do you think is going to win Champions League this year and, and why? Um, I hope they won't, but I think Chelsea is it's too strong, man. It's unbelievable. The defense and Mendy and goal, it's just... I'm, I'm a United fan in England, um, but I think Chelsea is really, really strong, man. They're very impressive. I think they could do it. You know. I, yeah, I agree you with think? you. I have to agree with you as well. I think there's a lot of people that are saying PSG, but I think the one thing you can't buy is chemistry. Uh, and I think they yeah. have too many egos, you know, but. I don't think they can do it. I don't think they can do it. It's just yeah. Messi is not going to change everything. Exactly. They really had Neymar that doesn't do it. Now they have two guys that don't different, plus Mbappe now. I think yeah. Chelsea, maybe Munich, you know, they're strong too. So it's those kind of yeah. teams always win the Champions League, man. You can't. You can win the Champions League because of one player. So, exactly, um, exactly. might be Chelsea. Yeah, I would love to see Man City because I feel like Pep Pep needs one. I'm a big Pep fan, but um, I don't know. It's, I think you know longevity it's, wise, it's hard um, for me because it's with City, but I love it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I know. I'm a, I like Arsenal, but that is that's gonna be a while. That's that's tough, but um yeah so that's pretty much uh you know all i have um i just want to say a really really big thank you for taking the time out of your day to to hop on uh and it it means a lot so you know yeah no thank you um i hope you somewhat enjoyed it and it wasn't too but um yeah so thank you and uh you know i wish you the best of luck in the in the future uh excited to see where you end up and yeah i hope you have a good rest of the day Thank you for having me, man. And good luck to you too, bro. I follow you too. Thank you. Thank you. I go on. Bye.